I'm from uh, uh, in India and in Bangalore right now. Hare Krishna, Shama Mataji, Dandavat Pranam, Shri Prabhupada ki Jai Guru Maharaj ki Jai. Thank you, Mataji, for giving your Thank valuable you. time and association this morning. We are very very fortunate to have you on the call. Mm-hmm. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to uh, um, have in the, you know been invited here and uh, to speak with you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji. We saw your son's video, Damodar video. Uh, <laughs> I need your blessings and constant prayers. <laughs> Oh, Mataji, your son is awesome, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yes. Is there anybody who would like to introduce themselves? We will uh, start in another one or two minutes because it's three minutes less to 10 o'clock. Call supposed to start at 10 o'clock. If there anybody they would like to introduce themselves, go ahead and introduce, please. Hare Krishna Mataji, I am Param Siddhi Devi Dasi from Iskon Kathwada, Gujarat. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you Mataji for joining and giving your valuable association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's okay. Should I start Mataji? Yeah Mataji, I will record Mataji. Yes. Oh. One second. Hare Krishna, I welcome everybody to Bhakti Sangha Jepa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have Her Grace Shama Mataji to enlighten us on topic creating interest, creating taste for Krishna consciousness in children. Uh, Before I hand over the call to Mataji, I would like to give a brief introduction about Mataji. Shama Mataji is a disciple of His Holiness Bhakti Vishak Swami Maharaj. Bhakti Vikas Swami Swami Maharaj. Please forgive me, Mataji. She has two sons, Damodar, who is four four and a half years, and Chaitanya is one and a half year old. She she is a computer engineer by profession. Now she is a homemaker. She she was in 2010 in um, in Philadelphia, USA, doing law. Services at ISKCON Philadelphia, Sunday school teacher organized and directed, di- directed dramas and dance with children, cooking, Philadelphia Ratyatra, Jepa Tent, Bhagavad Gita online sessions with Mataji. Mataji has moved uh, last year to Bangalore, currently teaching Bhagavatam to kids in USA and India via Zoom video conferences three days a week. Setting apart Bal Gopal School in Bangalore and Bhagavatam teaching at the school. Thank you, Mataji. We are very, very fortunate to have you on the call. Please take over the call, Mataji. Thank you so much, Mataji. All right. Uh, and thank you all for joining. And uh, given the short duration of this uh, talk, uh, actually, there's so much to speak uh, about this um, vast, vast topic. So uh, I'll just try to ch- touch upon various aspects and um, you know focus a little bit in detail uh, what I have been doing um, so far. And then um, so basically for different age groups, I can only touch upon um, certain age groups. And for the general scenario, I'll you know, probably try to give a little detail as to how we can try to uh, create a taste for Krishna consciousness. Um, Actually, even as the topic uh, suggests, we are trying to create taste for Krishna consciousness um, in children. Um, And of course, according to uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabhu Naya Shravanadi Shuddha Chitta Karaye Udaya. So this Krishna Prema, uh, is, is actually inherent in every jivatma and even our own children. So all we can do is that, um, you know, like an instrument of Krishna's mercy, we can try to uncover whatever is blocking their uh, progress in uh, Krishna consciousness. So by saying that, I'd, I'd like to go forward. So basically there is, 
we have to always see the big picture here. Um, so when we want a devotee child, first of all, um, how should we prepare ourselves um, as uh, aspiring devotees, as, as sadhakas? So in order to invite a devotee child into our um, family, more so into the womb, you know, we have this garbhadan samskara. So, so it starts right from there or even before how we prepare ourselves and then um, we can always mentally conceive what exactly we want, how we want our child to be. Um, of course, in, in the Krishna conscious uh, way, how, uh, what service maybe we want uh, his, uh, uh, the child uh, to even take forward. You know, just like uh, this has been um, uh, very nicely exemplified, like uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, how he specifically prayed uh, for such and such a child. And of course, by the, uh, of course, he was such an exalted devotee. Um, we we cannot imitate, but we can certainly follow the example. And you know, uh, when we um, pray with an earnest, sincere desire to please Guru and Gauranga, uh, by Lord's will, we may also get a nice uh, Vaishnava soul. And then uh, we we also go ahead. We do all the Garbhadana samskaras. Uh, whatever is so nicely, um, you know, you know, our acharyas have given in detail uh, some of how, how the astrological, um, you know, considerations are taken for the auspicious day, time, um, in order for, you know, for the conception to happen and how we have to prepare our consciousness for that. We have to have a certain mindset and also uh, the certain specific prayer. Um, and then um, for this, we can take, seek the help of uh, good astrologers, uh, within our movement um, who can help us you know understand what is the best time and how best we can uh, do within our uh, given uh, situation and um, in case if it arises a situation let's say if you're not able to find any astrologers or something we me and my husband uh, are also willing to help um, of course not for any money uh, because we've also uh, been uh, into astrology a little bit so we have uh, uh, we can also try to help if required and not just the astrological aspect there is a whole ayurveda aspect our diet and um, so of course we all follow the prasadam diet definitely but uh, kapila deva and uh, shrimad bhagavatam gives a lot more in detail uh, about how the diet should be during the pregnancy and how our lifestyle should be. Um, so this is a very, very big topic. So I, I'm just uh, barely going to touch upon here. Um, and if there is a need or demand for that, um, we can we can do a detailed session on that. Um, so just to keep it at brief, uh, you know, the food should not should neither be too cold nor too hot. It's, it shouldn't be too spicy. Uh, not salty because it's all going to uh, irritate um, the uh, womb. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, is am I audible? Is little yes, ma ma yes, Mataji. Can increase little bit volume, Mataji. It's okay. 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 I'll, I increase the volume. Okay. Uh, maybe my sari is disturbing the mic, I think. Zoom chair. Sorry? Okay, so since we had extensively researched this uh, topic of Garbhadan Samskara and Ayurveda and astrology, so yeah, that's why we, we said we could even help with that. And um, there is also a month by month diet plan for the diet uh, for the uh, development of the child so uh, if possible we can try to uh, practice all this and um, i have myself seen uh, in in my own children and even for the people who have followed this uh, the, the difference it makes in the health uh, even in the cognitive abilities of the children and so um, everything and and they don't uh, and they start sleeping through the night right away. And so things will get much more manageable and easier that way. So, and then of course, we uh, definitely need to take uh, seek blessings of uh, Guru and senior Vaishnavas and uh, uh, Gomata. If possible, we can go to uh, some Dhamma, uh, like Mayapur or uh, Vrindavan. And then uh, we can even uh, offer our prayers to uh, Mother Ganga or Yamuna.
Mataji, can you unmute yourself? I muted everybody. There is little disturbance. Okay, I just unmuted. Am I audible now? Yes, Mataji, now perfect. Okay, so once we have uh, this uh, conception or a goal of what kind of a child, what, what kind of a Vaishnava child we want and what goal we want for the child uh, so we can start working uh, backwards, so to speak. So uh, every step we take going forward uh, should be, um, you know, in order to nurture that. And uh, uh, Krishna willing, if the child also, uh, you know, exhibits uh, those tendencies, of course, we have to carefully um, uh, try and understand uh, what are the tendencies and natural instincts or skills of the child. So we have to mold them accordingly uh, in, our, in order to make them uh, serve in um, Srila Prabhupada's mission. Okay. And of course, uh, during uh, pregnancy, we should try and avoid as many chemicals or allopathic medicines as natural and Ayurvedic uh, way we do. It's, it's, it's for our best. And uh, uh, we have to chant and hear as much as possible and I'm sure as devotees, we all do that. And um, some of the senior devotees had uh, advised me that, you know, you can um, loudly play as loudly you could possible. So the womb can hear, play uh, Prabhupada's Japa or lecture and all that. So once the baby is born, how do we welcome such a special soul? Uh, because uh, Krishna sends us out of his mercy, uh, a devotee a soul. So even at the time of birth, uh, we should try and arrange even in the hospital, uh, if people, if they are cooperative, we can have a chanting of Bhagavad Gita or Hare Krishna chanting going so that, um, because these are all creating a certain um, environment or, uh, you know, samskaras or, you know, all these, um, all these auspicious um, things definitely see, start sinking into the consciousness of the child and make a very, very deep uh, impression. So. And then um, actually we started, we, uh, so. Good Gita chanting was on. And then uh, as soon as uh, my husband got actually focused right onto Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra as, as he was pointing towards each deity, they were able to, um, you know, uh, focus their vision onto these uh, deities, which, which is uh, amazing, but still it is possible by Krishna's mercy. So right from then on, uh, the more we uh, show them pictures, um, I personally uh, took, um, you know, the help, a lot of uh, DBT calendars, which are so beautifully done, uh, so many vivid pictures. And of course, uh, from Bhagavatam itself, our Srila Prabhupada's uh, greatest gift uh, to us and his at large. Uh, so we have no dearth of resources whatsoever in ESCON. So we have to make most use of all this. So the point here is we have to uh, think, we have to uh, make ourselves, you know, uh, sort of accustomed uh, to only Krishna conscious engagements. So we should not give ourselves a chance to, uh, you know, take, a, a, take advantage of any other, you know, like, mobile phones or any you know, gadgets or laptops and we should um, we should kind of uh, limit our options uh, so so i started thinking well back in the day mothers didn't have this option or parents didn't have this option so why should we fall back into this easily uh, yet uh, very tricky um, addictive option so uh, when we try to work this way definitely uh, and and prayfully krishna will really make a way for that and, uh, it, and it can certainly be done uh, to whatever practical extent possible. Uh, we can engage them in a nice Krishna conscious way, even for infants. So even uh, small infants, you know, three months old or six months old, whatever name, you name it, whatever we, uh, Krishna conscious uh, activities would, we do, definitely everything has an impact on them. So taking them to um, the temple for Arti, uh, especially evening Arti, uh, this old uh, divine grace, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur would always say um, that we should attend Gaura Arti every day. And uh, it definitely brings in uh, such nice um, uh, you know, spark of enthusiasm in the evening times. If possible, we should take them for Gaura Arti. And then we can do even at home and Kirtan with them. And all this will definitely have an impact. 
And so as soon as they are able to sit, so I, I, um, coming to my own experience, um, I want to share a little bit of my own experience. So what happened with me was, um, it was a conscious decision we had made uh, and we, you know, I delivered both my children in India, even though um, I conceived in the US. Um, so I was there, I had the support of my parents. And uh, so until my first son Damodar was six months. And though until then I didn't have to cook for almost nine months. And then, um, so I was back here in US when uh, he turned six and uh, uh, everything again, I had to start cooking and I had to start cleaning and I was a first time mother. It was all becoming very overwhelming for me. And then I couldn't uh, sort of handle it. And I was like, what do I do with my child? And all this while I was praying to have a devoted child. Now that I've, I have a you know, nice healthy child by Lord's grace, I'm only waiting for him to go to sleep because only then I would get a break and uh, I, I couldn't even do my sadhana properly. I was like, very disappointed with myself and I felt what do I do it, it's this is not happening and and I it was really by Lord's grace somehow I prayed and the Lord somehow shows the way and I also happened to see a couple of parenting seminars and um, it kind of gave me some hope uh, we may see these seminars and all that but still at the end of the day I had to uh, do it I, I really didn't know how to go about it like all the details because I didn't know anybody who had done it uh, for a, such a small child. But then somehow I started doing. And um, so what I did was I would make him try to make him sit when, as soon as he was able to sit on his own or otherwise. And then I would start showing pictures to him from Bhagavatam. And um, gradually, as I could sense that he was able to, um, you know, his attention span was uh, increasing a little a little more and a little more I would also increase my content a little more and little more so just first it would be barely mentioning the uh, name of that uh, DT or the name of that uh, Vaishnav or whatever that's in the picture and then ask, and and then flip uh, uh, the page over and show the next picture because uh, kids that small age they they have very less attention span and the attention span increases and then you have to do that as frequently as possible. And at that time, because I didn't know anyone who had done that, I, I didn't even know whether this was working or whether he was understanding anything or am I just wasting my time? But definitely not because I thought, okay, even if he's not able to understand anything, the very activity of you know doing Krishna Katha is as Srila Prabhupada would always say, Srinvatha Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Even if someone doesn't understand that activity itself is so auspicious and surely um, it will bring about uh, a taste um, eventually. And that did happen. And soon uh, he started um, reciprocating. Um, so at different stages differently. So after some time, he started, uh, even, even, even then he was still maybe around 10 months old. He started uh, pointing to pictures and he would ask me, uh, uh, what is this? And I would tell him, this is this, this is this. And after some time, he was still not able to speak. After some time, um, maybe uh, uh, close to one year or 13 months or something, uh, I started asking him, okay, can you show me Mahaprabhu's picture? Can you show me Harinam Sankirtan? Uh, so specific questions. And then because at that time I had we had this whole uh, you know, set of Bhagavatams, all volumes in, in um, one place. And he knew that. And you believe it or not, he would actually go pick the right volume, which had that particular picture. And then he would open the right page and he would point at the right picture and the right uh, person in the picture. So it was, it was amazing uh, to me. And I felt, oh, this is really amazing. So, so this is actually working. And, uh, but so we have to be patient. Initially we, initially, we may not see any reciprocation because obviously they're still very little, but it will have um, definitely later on, it will start showing itself. And then um, we also came to a point wherein I, I was able to tell him more sentences and finally I came to a point where I could tell him stories. But so to create taste, so one thing is what is required is, 
So it has to, we need to have that uh, conviction that ourselves, we need to have the conviction ourselves that this is the most important thing right now I have to be doing with my life and for my child. Um, because um, we, we could have other services or maybe other engagements, at least according to, uh, at least in my opinion, um, these uh, zero to three or five years, because Kaumaram, Achari, Pragno, Dharman, Bhagavata, Niha, the Kaumara age zero to five, and several Acharyas also make note of it. It's so important because now they're starting fresh in this life. So it's like a white paper. Whatever we write, that's what we get because they're still very much within our influence and the parents obviously can mold them the way they want. And they also need the crave for that attention and we rightly can make a advantage, take advantage of that. And uh, this, this is the best way to give them attention, to read to them Srila Prabhupada books, show to them the pictures and tell them the stories. And uh, so what happens by this is not only do they start feeling um, uh, that they are cared for and they're getting all the attention that they really crave for, but they, definitely benefit so much spiritually. And another thing I, I, I would think is, you know, even, even if nothing happens whatsoever, even if he's not able to understand whatsoever initially when I started. So I thought, let me make this a habit. I wanted my child to get a habit into reading Shri Prabhupada's books. Even if he's just making a show, even if it's just playing with Shri Prabhupada's books, Hopefully one day he will himself come to a point of actually wanting to read the book. So, because this Shravana is so important that only when we are hearing is right. And when we read and hear about the scriptures, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, um, that's how even we get to know that we have to chant. So initially when we all started practicing, it was because somebody told us, or because we heard Shri Prabhupada's uh, lecture or book and that what is why chanting is important. The, that way, um, so this uh, Shravana is, becomes uh, so important. So Shravana Adi, everything starts with Shravana. So, but then <laughs> this also comes with a side effect, so to speak. So it, it has a kind of a boomerang effect, I would say. Uh, it happened, it happened uh, in both my son's case, not just one. Um, my second child is extremely hyper and he's not as uh, sober as the first one. I thought, how will I be able to make him sit down? But even otherwise, if he's extremely active and hyper, but just for Krishna Katha, he's, he's absolutely into it. So, so both of them, and even my first one year old, actually, he also asks, he keeps asking, ta, ta, ta. He, he can't say Katha, so he says ta, ta, ta. So it, I'm just saying this really is so potent uh, with the transcendental uh, potency of Srimad Bhagavatam and Srila Prabhupada's uh, 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 words, transcendental words, it, it has amazing effects. So, I'll come back to shlokas. And yeah, I just want to give a little tip here. Um, so how to make this reading activity Okay. It has to be really interactive. If we are taking the zero to three year span, uh, we need to have their attention. We need to make sure that they're, they're having fun. So otherwise we lose them. So how, how to go about it? Even, a, even for a small child of let's say one year um, or, a, or 10 month old, if they've started babbling some words, uh, like Amma or Ma or Pa, they understand oh, this is a mother, this is father, or a few words here and there. We should always try to use that, use those words into the vocabulary from their own words in, in our uh, narration of the story. That way, you can actually see the minute you use those words, they immediately, uh, you get their attention immediately. My, my child actually, immediately he gives me a look, thinking, oh, she's talking my language. So. And uh, we should make them also like, you know, enact simple things like, you know, uh, and I would, I would keep telling them the story of Narada Muni and how Narada Muni 
he, he and his mother offered uh, dandavats to the mahabhagavatas who came so i say when they I, when i say dandavats he actually offers dandavats that way they need to also feel involved somehow try and you should make them also participate in some way and um, and you can also make them participate in the way that um, we have to make it little um, you know, boisterous in the sense it has to be uh, loud and uh, it should have a, an enthusiastic overtone i would say like you know uh, wherever possible i try to uh, say oh shila parpat ki jai and the minute i say nitai gor premanande hari hari bol he raises his hand and he does the hari bol so these things uh, make their enthusiasm uh, going uh, it helps them to uh, stay tuned so and we they they also we can help them do actions at the same time we ourselves can uh, do a lot of actions which they can imitate um of course i am you know if it were to be a more detailed session if someone wants it uh, we could you know I, i could do some demo but for because now i just am keeping it short so even for a small child of a one year old child um so i you know we can say simple um philosophical things that you know okay when you chant what happens krishna inside your heart he will clean 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 our heart so these are some of the things that i try to repeat so on repetition it really works wonders for them and they they love it okay um i'll i'll take a quick look at uh, shloka so when it comes to shlokas uh, so people ask us how how did we have our child memorize so many shlokas the entire Bhag- bhagavad gita at an early age and all that so it, it it by god's grace it happened with our first son um and even if we were to say try and do the same things exact same things with our, our the second child i really don't know if the same thing may happen but uh, the point here is uh, we can only give them uh, according to their inclination and aptitude according to their own reception receptive capacity uh, but we can't really force them or compare them with others so so how did we go about it so of course i started off early i always had this desire um, you know so as soon as he started uh, talking in little phrases or even if they start talking even one word you could you could start by um, you know saying uh, chanting one word from the shloka and make them repeat and so it's it just every even that becomes a matter of habit so for one shloka initially it may take very long so it was it it'll be about just getting those words getting them to repeat those words and then they'll eventually yeah. get it so in with my first son he was actually a late talker uh, he didn't even talk until 2 years so at two and a half i started uh, giving one one word uh, of the shloka and then soon this chanting of bhagavad gita in itself is so powerful that his speech his clarity everything improved and it really picked up he his vocabulary everything and then uh, from between 3 and 4 he actually happened to memorize the entire gita by the lord's grace so the one thing which is really important in memorizing shlokas is uh, like i said with um, reading to them even this has to become a kind of a daily routine activity or regular as regular as possible so with kids because they are not used to seeing anything else or anyone else's uh, schedule or routine whatever we give them they think that was normal that is how it is and that's that's how they get used to it and so my my son would think oh all all kids do this all kids and uh, and he was having fun so and sometimes you know my 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 husband actually did a lot of uh, um memorization part he did with him sometimes he would take him to the park and uh, you know um, they had a little bit of uh, you know, different kind of strategies whatever worked initially to set the routine and once it was set and um, he knew okay we we should do this at every time and then he would himself ask oh, what do we do next and what do we do next so um it 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 can certainly happen but of course it depends on each child so and now um uh, another important aspect about uh, 
giving taste in Krishna consciousness um, or teaching Bhagavatam is that we should try to incorporate the philosophy, uh, the tattva along with the leela or the story. So I have seen in many cases that um, it could be parents or teachers uh, merely tell the story and they because because we think that you know philosophy is too much for kids so we may not tell the kid but uh, actually that that is a big loss for the child in so many ways um it is it, we it may be our own um, you know um, prejudice so to speak that we we may think that oh children cannot understand actually in, in many ways children have, do not have any kind of a preconceived notion or a prejudice. Because if you tell them, okay, Krishna is the Supreme Lord and he has a spiritual body and they, they take it at its face value, they accept it immediately. And it, it becomes actually very easy. And to give an example, even at, at three years, um, my son Damodar, uh, he knew what is Sattva Rajat Maguna and not just knowing, he could actually apply also saying, oh, uh, doing this is Rajaguna, doing this is Tamaguna, so things like that. We, we can teach, it is possible, and we can teach in a fun way. Mm. And um, and uh, there is a uh, there's a most important um, you know, shloka, one of the important shlokas from Chaitanya Charitamrita also talks about this. It says it's a very famous one, you, you would have uh, heard about it. Siddhanta Baliya Chitta Na Kara Alasa Ihaha Ite Krishna Lage Sudhura Manasa. One, of course, we should not feel uh, lethargy or, uh, you know, should not hold back in discussing philosophy. Uh, secondly, only by discussing philosophy um, or the Tattva Vichara, our mind becomes strong. Our mind becomes really strong. And we will be, our, um, it'll be anchored, you know, and because. This is not just for the adults, even for children. Um, we will see going forward how, um, even in our movement, we have seen, you know, children even who are raised in the moment, uh, they would have been doing everything. They go to Mangalarti, they uh, probably even were chanting and, you know, doing so many Krishna conscious activities, but going forward, uh, they just, you know, in their later years, maybe teenage or adolescent year, they just give up everything. Yes, of course, because of some external influence. But many of the senior devotees I've, I've met really confirmed this uh, uh, thought of mine saying, yes, if, if children are given philosophy right from the beginning and their mind is completely convinced and intelligence is completely convinced of uh, you know, this Krishna consciousness or this Krishna Bhakti being the most important thing in our life that we have to be doing, then they will definitely not leave. Even temporarily, if they stray away, they will surely come back. So um, another thing is, you know, how do we approach the teaching philosophy? Um, we have to keep it very crisp. Like, you know, the most important thing in uh, philosophy, teaching philosophy is Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana. That means, who is Krishna? What is our relationship with him? He's our best friend. He's our original father. And then what should we do? Uh, we have to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and we have to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. We chant Hare Krishna, then Krishna inside our heart will clean her hearts. This is how actually, you know, you have to make it a little animated and expressive for them, clean our hearts. And then, and then what do we do? Prayojana, what do we get from that? Then we can go up, up, up to Goloka Vrindavan. And then we can all have so much fun with Krishna. We can play with Krishna. Uh, we can have whatever you want, your favorite, most favorite sweet, your most favorite fruit, whatever you want. There are so many desire trees, you get everything there. So I mean, this is, you know, in a nutshell, we get a picture. So this. We, can, we have to keep repeating Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. That way, as conditioned souls, as Jivatmas, whether it is an adult or a child, we are always um, looking for what is in it for me. If I do something, what is my gain? It is natural, quite natural. 
and uh, so our acharyas and the supreme lord they know definitely what is our thinking process so that's why all through the vedas wherever you go they always give a phala shruti they always give us some fruit okay we don't have to take the material fruit karma kanda but even even in in spirituality even in krishna consciousness we need to understand where where we are going what do we get from this <clears throat> then to give them the highest uh, spiritual you know taste becomes easy so so while discussing now as we move on from uh, you can the, the best there is no shortcut for knowing when to introduce what concept for a particular child uh, so the parents or the teachers they have to have a very keen uh, and a close understanding okay uh, how how the child is now responding how much more he can take um so so may i have seen even as early as 2.5 years um we can teach philosophy crisply shortly uh, and from then on you can start or you feel if the child is not comfortable yet uh, you can for the delay it no problem and another uh, way is to we have to um it should be a lot of question and answer more inter- interactive and we have to try and post questions you know we have to challenge them to reason philosophically and it works many a times we can get the answers from them rather than we are still giving a straight forward answer and we can uh, have them do so many activities and projects to demonstrate uh, and internalize so many of these philosophical concepts and it this where the fun um, point comes about it's uh, the, uh, there is no end to this actually there's no end um, even in, in in the bhagavatam class that i do um, i usually kind of give a activity wherever possible because what that happens is one they have heard they have understood and by doing the activity they are spending more time on it and um, in a group now they can share what they have done if possible uh, this is in a group setting at home if you're doing just with your child you can do it or you need not uh, i really didn't do it with my child when i was doing it alone with him but yeah in a group setting it helps and then um, doing them you know making them to uh, do the role play just enacting very short you don't have to rehearse any drama nothing so when you're talking about um, uh, uh, any part of shrimad bhagavatam uh, let's say for example the other day we were enacting uh, how uh, riyavrata maharaja when he was a brahmachari and he was uh, uh, under the guidance of narada muni he wanted to be a brahmachari but then his father um, swayambhuva manu wanted him to um, become the king so and then um, so we uh, immediately without no rehearsal nothing you know even the parents and the children they can enact or if there are more friends the children can uh, you know uh, bring in their role play ideas and um, i just want to share a small uh, video here this was done um, by the kids from my shrimad bhagavatam class we were learning about uh, the four legs of dharma um, satyam shaucham daya tapasya and how uh, in kaliyuga all the three legs are not there only um, dharma bull is standing there on just one leg of truth and i didn't even give them this idea the kids themselves came up with this idea and At the end of Treta Yuga, Anand. 
All right, so you get an idea. So the kids are enacting how each leg of dharma is being cut off. And by in, in Kali Yuga, finally, there's only one leg of dharma. Okay. Okay, so, so we have this, uh, the best resource of all Srila Prabhupada's books with all the beautiful illustrations, and yet we have the option of a little Krishna, um, the cartoon. And it's, it's very uh, tempting, and it's, uh, you know, we can easily give that to the, and yeah, many of us do that. Um, once in a while, maybe, uh, but then for, what happens with that is uh, we need to give them a higher uh, challenge, so to speak. When we show little Krishna or any cartoon or if they're hooked on to uh, some kind of a movie, um, the brain doesn't have much of uh, activity there. So everything is being spoon fed and you're just watching and you don't uh, really have to think. Um, but when we are reading with them, so they have to use their imagination and uh, that that gives them so much room to you know think over contemplate about this whole subject matter and not to say that, you know I, I can't emphasize more but uh, it is Srila Prabhupada's own transcendental words and his own uh, uh, pure uh, realizations on the platform of Krishna Prema that he has given us these books so nothing can replace that so um the one the one disadvantage of mm, another disadvantage you know philosophically speaking you know with all these cartoons are they uh, are coming through the lens of may not be a hundred percent pure devotee who has actually uh, created the cartoon it will be their conception so uh, but sticking to Srila Prabhupada's books we know hundred percent this is how Srila Prabhupada um, saw Krishna and his Leela. So, and we may think it's it's really high English, uh, you know, it a lot of, it's a lot philosophical, but uh, again, this is also a matter of habit or a routine. So over time, they will get used to it and their vocabulary will improve and then um, they, they'll just love it. And then they, you don't even have to take to any, any other books. Um, for, for smaller children, uh, we could use uh, other uh, smaller books just for the pictures uh, because they, we have a lot more pictures. There's also a four volume Krishna book for smaller children. But uh, as soon as they're able to uh, sit for long, we can start reading to them directly from this Krishna book. So um, as far as the philosophy is concerned, we, and the uh, you know, content-wise, we can st stick to Srila Prabhupada's books uh, as much as possible. And uh, so with, with uh, while well, reading Bhagavatam, uh, we can, you know, keep it short, we can uh, go on with the translations. So in our case, um, so Damodar, uh, you know, when, uh, when we started reading Krishna book, he would have so many of these questions. And once he asked his father, Krishna, if Krishna loves everybody, uh, Daddy, why does he kill the demons? So it was a really valid question. And this question has been answered in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So that made my uh, husband think, okay, then we have to uh, take up the seventh canto. So that led, so he started uh, seventh canto and then uh, and then moved on to the next and next. So now uh, we have finished like five cantos of uh, Bhagavatam, uh, reading the translations and um, he just absolutely loves it. And of course, as far as possible, uh, we have to avoid the gadgets and screens for teaching our kids. If it is an online uh, you know, class, we can't help it, but at least at our homes, uh, we have to limit as far as possible because everything we are uh, doing with them, it is sort of becoming, um, we are setting a you know, kind of a um, you know, routine or, uh, they 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 try to um, internalize it by thinking this is the way it works. So uh, if we can avoid that, then they will be, they'll become naturally more attached to books rather than these uh, mobile phones or uh, TV. Um, and even in in the case of my children, I've seen that um, because I deliberately would give them books. Um, 
and I would not want to give them any phone as far as possible. So they would start flipping through the books and they would keep looking at the pictures themselves, even as a one-year-old child. Of course, each child has his own, um, you know, maybe a span of attention, which may differ. My first child would sit much longer than my second, but they still, they can engage themselves and give us some free time too. And it, it, this is and in the most wonderful way. Uh, and they're able to, this is also everything is, you know, creating some taste for Srila Prabhupada's books and to look at the pictures. And um, so both, both parents, if they can invest some time, it will be really great. Uh, if both are working, um, even so, or if the father is only the father is working, even then, you know, it could be a little time over the weekend or it could, it could be after work. Uh, like I said, bonding with children uh, through reading Shri Prabhupada books to them is really one of the best ways. And of course, we can always do kirtan together. Um, but this way, we can we can we can understand um, you know the pulse of the child, how, what really is he thinking, and uh, how far is he come in his cognitive abilities and uh, other things. So, and it gives the very deeper meaning to our own relationship with our children. Uh, chanting japa definitely um, it's, it's uh, not easy, and we have to. Uh, try and inspire them and not to, to force them. Uh, we can, what we have done is we can, we try to take a child for Mangalarti like once a week or something, you know, um, only if he wants to, you can make him uh, sleep early the previous night. And then uh, if he's in a mood to go get up early in the morning and most of the time he does. And then you can take them and especially when they see other devotees, especially if there are younger devotees, brahmacharis, chanting with so much enthusiasm, uh, it has a very good effect on them. Um, he may chant one round at home, but over there he may want to chant, they may want to chant some three, four rounds. So um, that is possible. E or even at home, if you are not close to temple, uh, we can have other devotees and their kids come over and have a good uh, japa session. So the, there are a lot of other ways to engage and create taste. So the, so the main main point of uh, Bhagavata Dharma is of course Shravan Kirtanam. And then around it, there are so many other ways to engage uh, in a Krishna conscious way, or at least in a natural way. So that they don't get addicted to the gadgets or other uh, social networking sites. So we have extensive information about this and even about Garbhadan Samskara, as I was uh, telling previously, uh, one of our um, devotees from Eston, his grace Bharat Chandra Prabhu has actually written a book uh, by doing research about uh, all the games um, and arts that Krishna played and with his friends and all the traditional games. It's a fantastic book. So you may also want to take a book, take a look. So um, by engaging children this way, we can also remind them that, look, Krishna used to play this and Balaram would play this. And then that way they, they will relish in that. Of course, if it, it may demand some certain natural environment, but even at home, simple, uh, whatever, without any um, hi-fi electronic gadgets, this is even better. And um, as, as they are growing up more, you know, we can also, looking at their talents or inclinations, there are so many arts. Uh, so like 64 arts, traditional arts, rangoli and jewelry making and garland making and so on. So you name it as for every child, definitely there are ample, ample options. So when we, when we talk about children being addicted to social networking or other things, it is because one of the reasons is definitely there is a, probably a lack of engagement. So we have to proactively look into several of these Krishna conscious options and they can definitely um, be very, very um, happy with that. And um, so coming on to the preteens and teens, you know, uh, the kids, older kids. And so a lot of what we've discussed definitely applies to everybody creating a taste for Bhagavatam and uh, uh, Krishna Katha and chanting. And um, we, in, in the, especially around teenage, uh, like uh, Chanakya Pandita says, Putram Mitra Vadacharet, Chodashe Prapte Tuvashe, Putram Mitra Vadacharet. We have to look upon them like a friend. So, and from 5 to 15, 
there should be a lot of discipline and uh, even chastisement um, uh, but especially around 15 16 we have to be you know friend like in their dealings in our dealings and then um, in in their friend circle or in a devotee friend circle we could um, you know have them research different topics from bhagavatam bhagavatam and then they could give presentations on you know it could be mahabharata it could be 12 mahajanas we did this in our sunday school experience and it really worked out very well that way uh, they have something to offer and when they uh, have to dig into a topic and research about it it definitely give them gives them a lot of room to uh, delve into the depths of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and um, we can make them preach to the younger kids that way uh, it becomes a sort of a responsibility that oh I'm preaching this you know that you need to chant then I need to chant myself and you know be be an example uh, it could be to younger kids in uh, you know their Sunday school or other uh, kids in your community and again activities and projects definitely work wonders and of course, as we all know, there are so many other, uh, you know, Krishna conscious activities, uh, which give them more inspiration and taste according to their uh, individual abilities. You know, celebrating festivals frequently at home gives them more, much more a chance to express their creative talent. It could be with rangoli or decoration and, and abhisheka. Even for small kids, they really thoroughly enjoy doing abhisheka. Um, then dance and dramas and youth kirtan. Uh, book distribution, especially book distribution and preaching. Uh, so it really brings out, uh, you know, a lot of talents and uh, it gives them the confidence in their own um, self, especially um, in their being a devotee. So, so um, having said all this, so we should also do a little bit of an introspection that, okay, we are yeah. trying to create taste in Bhagavatam. We are trying to create, create taste in chanting and Bhagavad Gita. Um, so what is it that I want my child to do? What is it that this taste for Krishna Bhakti should lead my child to do what? Um, is it only that, oh, may, definitely uh, reading Bhagavatam definitely makes one very uh, sharp and intelligent and even... Um, uh, there has been a lot of research done, I believe, in, in, in the UK that uh, uh, kids who are made to chant uh, Sanskrit shlokas, uh, their diction and speech and their memory capacity really uh, increases uh, amazingly. So these are definitely, there are material benefits, no doubt, because anything Krishna conscious is like chintamani, we get everything. But what is it that Srila Prabhupada wanted? So that we need to ponder on uh, to actually give back what we are getting from uh, Srila Prabhupada and Iskon. So this, we have all, all this we saw was such an invaluable gift we are getting from Srila Prabhupada. Then it becomes our utmost responsibility also to uh, give it back in, in some way. I'm, I'm sure all of you are doing so much more services and all that but now even in we should we should try to inculcate that in our children um in the sense that you know uh, bhakti should not become a side thing okay a little bit bhakti in the morning little bit bhakti in the night but throughout the day you know how we have to we have to make a living and you know with that shouldn't become sort of a theme in the house uh, or that shouldn't be you know uh, that the children should not catch that that you know earning money is a central uh, part of one's life or everyday life earning money is it will happen it is a side thing whatever krishna willing according to our karma it will happen but then the central part the most important part is to, uh, to serve uh, the supreme lord and his devotees so of course as i mentioned uh, we have to be careful in a way to understand and nurture our children according to their skills and even according to their varna maybe we, we over time we can identify uh, easy showing brahmanical tendencies to become uh, you know a, a preacher or to be as in a scholar um, or a pujari maybe or is he showing uh, more kshatriya tendencies you know to be able to manage 
uh, something or you know why she attended see does he want to you know uh, do business and things like that because every child uh, one size does not fit all so but krishna consciousness is amazing it uh, has room and options for everybody and um, we should definitely explore such avenues um, even within iskon there are so many varnashrama projects coming up and um, even uh, bbt projects um, there are uh, gurukulas coming up cultural projects you know innumerable opportunities for uh, the future generation to um, um, actually serve directly in the mission of shila propad uh, the reason i say this is shila propad if we hear his lectures of shila shrimad bhagavatam and if uh, and throughout his uh, you know purports of shrimad bhagavatam he very much wanted this he didn't want a future generation uh, uh, to sort of get you know entrapped by uh, you know maya outside world gives us and it is certainly very um, challenging to balance bhakti and uh, our uh, life outside you know and it's it's only getting worse and worse with the uh, with every day passing of kaliyuga so we all as a society we do need to Uh, come together and we need to ensure that we we give a system we give a infrastructure for our children that they don't have to go outside to earn a living and shila propad uh, has given us um, such a big um, you know umbrella that can encompass everything why not uh, to earn a livelihood why not uh, to make a full a whole life perfect within this uh, society of uh, devotees so i'm sure we can come up with options and uh this is uh, my short uh, address here so i would like to head end here um sorry if i where are you going to go ahead mate ji go ahead mate ji go hari krishna mate ji danat pranam aur glorious krishna prabhupada and guru maharaj Thank you so much, Mata Ji, for coming and giving your session in the call. We are very, very happy, Mata Ji. Ah, uh, it's really very, very, very inspiring, and it's very necessary in our society how we have to cultivate our kids in Krishna consciousness. It is very helpful, Mata Ji. I think some of the devotees they have a question. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw some of the Mata Ji's. They already raised their hand, Mata Ji. Yeah, they can go ahead and ask the question. Ah, uh, Champakala, ah, uh, uh, Champakata, Lata Mata Ji. Can yes, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Dhanva Pranam, all glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Dev. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for such a wonderful Hare seminar. Uh, we are very grateful to you. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. I just want to make sure Mata Ji is there on the call. Because yes, I yes. Um. Yes, Mataji. Actually, my um, my screen froze. I'm I'm on the phone. I can hear. Okay, 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 okay. Go ahead, Mataji. Jump back, Lata Mataji. Mataji, I have a question. Um, shlokas, uh, like I saw the Damodar uh, Damodar uh, video, and I was so amazed to see that. So I have right. two three questions together. Uh, when it comes to shloka, my daughter and my son, like daughter is seven year old and the son is three year old. sometimes sun doesn't even open the mouth like as soon as i would say chinta mani prakara sadmasu mm 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 he has different uh, uh, interest like he love to do aartis uh, pujari services uh, doing abhishek during morning uh, whole program but when it would come to shlokas he wouldn't open his mouth so i would appreciate if you can just help me understand how i can encourage him to do shloka but definitely he loves to do bhagavatam because we do bhagavatam every day almost every day and he loves to hear gajendra stories and everything along with that i have a personal question for you hope you don't mind me asking uh, that i just found out that you moved a year back to bangalore so i want to relate a little bit myself to you and uh, i'm sorry if i'm asking you a personal question that what made you to move uh, to bangalore instead of uh, living in philadelphia and uh, i've heard that in that one year there was a drastic uh, drastic uh, uh, changes in damodar and um, and he could to he could accomplish so much in that one whole year so would you mind if i ask you this humbly thank you mata ji
ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> you know he may have a certain interest and he may not display it so even when it comes to sh- chanting shlokas um one thing i have heard even devotees say this that it works and it has worked for many devotees is that you can you can keep playing bhagavad gita or if you want uh, whichever uh, brahma samhita you can keep playing the audio all day even i don't i haven't done that many times sometimes i try to do but i have, some devotees have told me that they have seen who have done that even without them actually taking an effort to sit with them and do but uh, even with my son uh, damodar i have seen some shlokas that we have not even tried to teach him it was because you know some audio was playing repeatedly and one fine day he's just chanting it how how do they get it because it is all seeping into the consciousness so you could do that that will definitely have some effect but it could be at whatever sweet time they uh, they want you know ag- according to their nature it could be at 10 years or it could be at uh, uh, 11 years we don't know we have to wait and see and um, yeah you could always try to like encourage you know with kids it keeps changing they are not the same every time some some days or maybe even a whole year or it may be few months they may not be willing to do something and suddenly they may do so you can try now and then you can try to encourage and see if he is willing to chant or if see if he is showing signs to chant um, if not you can play this in the background that will also have a good effect uh, for sure um, or another thing is uh, you can have other kids if you have uh, an older sibling uh, you can t- have them do and they they love to respond more with their older sibling i've seen with my own son in many other ways <laughs> sometimes he won't let me feed him but he wants his uh, brother to feed him so and when they see other kids chanting so you can create a group that also works wonders now i have also seen in my bhagavatam call also that uh, some kids wouldn't open their mouth whatsoever of course they were young also uh, but then on seeing other kids chanting finally they also started after some time it, it is all about inspiring them and whatever it takes whatever it takes yena kena prakarena mana krishna nivesha so yeah we should keep trying and um, if not that's fine if that is the will of the lord and if that is their inclination that's fine like you said he already has you're already doing such nice training yourself which is great um so in maybe at some other maybe when when he's growing up in his growing up years he may want to do it or he may not uh, which is fine as long as they have an attraction for shravan kirtan and as long as they have an attraction for uh, any other angas of bhakti then that is fine you're you're going in the right direction i hope it uh, answered your question and co- coming to the second question uh yes ma- many people think in that one year everything changed uh, that's what i said that came that became obvious what was happening because people saw him chanting but um, a lot of it went in, in the background also as i said i i started giving him you know training how to sit and hear sit and read and that really made an impact I, that even i didn't know it would lead to all this uh even though i had a desire we both me and my husband had a very strong desire uh, somehow by lord's mercy it's happening so far but the thing is uh what we are doing by giving them a training to uh, hear katha training to sit is that um one they're they're becoming definitely more satvic 
and they're they're not of course they become uh, otherwise kids are very restless and because this is creating a taste and they're able to sit for long you know it is not possible otherwise to for a child to you know of a 3 year old child uh, to sit for long and be able to chant and learn shlokas but how it happened was even before he even before moving to india in in america too even when he was around 2 years old like i said we should be prepared for the boomerang effect so with my son what happened was uh if someone would have seen me they they would have thought I, i've gone mad uh, the way i was uh, doing katha with him because i was a little scared that i was not confident that you know i, I thought I, maybe i can't i don't know how to give make my child a devotee I, I i was at loss i really didn't know what to do and i very badly wanted him to get attracted to krishna katha get attracted to chanting and prabhu pad books so what i did was at least chanting was far off he couldn't even say appa or amma not even one word he 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 said until he was 2 years old he, i i had all these dreams right i wanted him to chant bhagavad gita shloka and all that. until 2 years old he didn't say one single word and but only much later at uh, after 2 years he started saying simple words one word here and there and then after i started especially teaching him one shlo- one word of shloka at a time that's how i said how amazingly he picked up that was really the transcendental effect of bhagavad gita and the mercy so yeah what people probably didn't know was earlier to that even before he was not speaking he was very much attracted to krishna katha so much so that and of course i probably <laughs> inflicted that in him because while sitting while walking while playing while feeding even while putting him to sleep i would always tell him a story and uh, so that way it it really uh, set the mood and then he started asking for more and more and more and so that that worked later on also for sitting and chanting everything i think went uh, well so okay i think i'll if i answered your question and i will be move on to next question okay i think uh, divya rajapriya mataji thank you mataji hari krishna kanta pranam uh, mataji had a uh, one question was uh, regarding friendship mataji so i have a two and a half he's almost two and a half year old my son and uh, so this is the time then they see other children they want to associate with i know because Uh, one thing is the asso- kind of association that the parents can give but uh, the other thing is also seeing similar age children so he's our first child so he doesn't have a sibling but uh, so we are we want to know what kind of does damodar have friends mataji and how important do you think friendship is as they go along maybe not now but when they take 8 years 10 years i think uh, friendship also plays a role and what kind of friendship are you uh does he have or are you aspiring for for the mother and chaitanya and uh, one more question i had was also uh, what is uh, your uh, road map for his schooling mataji are you uh, thinking of are you or are you already like home schooling him or are you having your own school set up so these are the two questions i had mataji thank you very much hari krishna okay. uh, yes mataji friends to uh, play a very very important role as we all know especially as they are growing up uh, initially they are more under the control of the parents and influence but yes uh, we definitely we need to be uh, at least till the extent where we are able to you know have a say or have a control on on our children we need to be um, mindful of what kind of association what kind of friends they are getting it's definitely the best goes without saying if they are very much within devotee circles or uh, if that is not possible also uh, we can try to minimize to the extent possible the external influences um and uh, if there is someone like um, who can um sort of maybe if not of this it's it need not be of the same age group Uh, it, if if there are older children who can inspire if we have faith in them so they, we can you know with with our um, monitoring they can hang out with little older children also it's uh, i think uh, sometimes we are always thinking they need to be in the same age peer group uh, uh, many a times they learn better uh, when they are with the bigger children and 
that way they also their mannerisms and their behavior will be better so with children of the same age if one child misbehaves or has a you know cranky or throws tantrums most children will imitate that the bad things or oh, it doesn't go, you know goes without saying they, they uh, imitate so if possible yeah we can have even older children especially in temple set up uh, but parents need to always monitor and uh, how 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 best we can safeguard is um, in my opinion it's it's better we take interest along with other parents to actually give them some krishna conscious engagements as a group as friends so because <clears throat> even as they're growing up they they'll definitely have topics to talk we can't be all the time with them so if we have given them the taste and my dream personal dream would be to see all devotee kids when they get together sharing realizations from bhagavatam bhagavad gita so if that is so much in it if it has gone so much into their consciousness and if that is a, uh, you know playing a major role in their everyday schedule why not surely that's what they're going to uh, discuss so uh, i think we can try to do that as a society we need to do that by giving them that taste um secondly what, uh, what we are thinking going ahead for damodar right that was the question yeah we have uh of course we have to see i can't um, i can't set anything in stone according to how you know he responds and um we did have a uh, you know we had we did have a preschool setup um, where we yeah, we were teaching bhagavatam for kids um locally in our community and then of course now because of lockdown and everything and he also has um, you know sanskrit you know t- being taught uh you know it is kind of an online gurukula also so we'll see how what you know how things uh, shape up going forward and um if there is a, a good devotee and good standing that can um, guide and um, mentor our children you know especially as uh, teenagers that will be very very helpful to uh, whom we can have some faith in because uh, once they approach a teenage uh parents can't be the only people telling and they'll not want to listen to the parents uh even uh, shila bhakti vinod thakur sent shila bhakti sidhant saraswati thakur to gaur kishor dada babaji maharaj because some chastisement some discipline has to come from a guru uh, figure also or a mentor so yeah thank you mataji thank you mataji okay thank you so much um yes uh maybe uh, champakalata mataji ओके everything along with the kids so how you are managing like if you can just tell us like the schedule like what time you are spending with your kids and all right right managing. yeah definitely it is um, not easy and i am in no way uh, someone who has any extraordinary abilities and uh, i pick and choose my priorities uh, so i don't definitely take on any services big services from the temple my only thing is now i'm doing bhagavatam with kids 3 days a week only once in a while maybe i uh, give class in our mataji's forum uh, i and definitely my husband also um, puts in uh, gives in his time with uh, damodar and especially with the second child it is definitely challenging uh, so what we do is we have a routine kind of a schedule for damodar um <clears throat> he goes to sleep around 9:30 and he wakes up on his own maybe around 9 7 6:30 or 7 like that and after his morning schedule i mean routine um he finishes bath and all that and uh, he does a chapter of bhagavad gita recitation like that it takes like 5 to 10 minutes maybe and then he has breakfast and then after that uh, he he has his uh, sanskrit class mm, so 
and then you know he has his lunch and then before he ta- he takes a nap in the afternoon so uh, before going for his nap he does bhagavatam for some time and then he takes a nap uh, and, and of course he plays in between um, you know after the sanskrit class and then even after his nap in the evening he plays uh, quite a bit and then uh, again he uh, does a uh, uh, some revision of his sanskrit uh, and uh, he has dinner and before going uh, to bed he does krishna book so we can divide uh, at different uh, time and parts of the day we can if we can try and manage uh, that will be helpful um one we, it has to be a little routine a little bit of a routine set up for them at the same time it shouldn't become uh, too much of a burden whatever they are comfortable with it should they should be in a position to ask for more especially if you know yeah he will want to keep on going with bhagavatam or krishna katha but uh, so we can have some time managed like that but uh, yes for mataji is definitely so much cooking and cleaning um yes we have to prioritize how, this is how much cleaning i can do if you ask me in my opinion i don't think uh, every i can't do all roles perfectly there is you know there is some uh, give and take uh, but what matters the most at this point is you know in these fleeting years especially uh, when they are young and we have our you know full time with them we need to we can influence them why not Uh, so maybe other things can take a back seat that in my opinion it's okay there are some things that can you know take a uh, back seat but that's okay we can do try and do as much as we can and rest um, as long as we are able to give them our bit of krishna consciousness every day uh, we are good that's how i feel so result is not we should we need not compare our, our result with anyone else as long as we are doing our bit for our situation for our child that is all it matters and krishna will surely reciprocate thank you mathi and krishna book uh, reading so is it like uh, we have to read or uh, we have to make them read so for okay she is 9 uh, years old now so yeah yeah if he is able to read definitely you can make them read um, and you know the the you can also uh, stop at points where in you, you can explain more and or if there is new words then you know uh, you can that can build into their vocabulary yeah if they are able to read definitely that will be very good for them that way they are also engaged and feel a part of it or you can take turns in reading and you know if if they again if they are reading all the time their mind should not wander into just reading that's also a trap Yeah, and actually, there he's not not interested in reading. He can he will just sit in here, but not interested mm. in much reading. First thing you see how much pages is there to finish right, that shloka. Right. So, right, right, right. Yeah, then whatever it takes, whatever works for him. Yeah. So, like in a group setting, like I said, if his friends are also reading, and then you make them uh, do a tiny uh, part of a chapter or a lila, and then uh, give them a project, they can uh, come back. and uh, discuss certain points or maybe a quiz or something when they do it with their friends they will definitely be very inspired thank you mataji hari krishna oh, mataji i have a Hare very good question mataji mataji yes, how did you maintain the revision mataji because my uh, daughter is uh, now 5 year old uh, she knows mataji, almost uh, my name is rinda Uh, she knows almost um, more than 150 shlokas so it is getting very hard for me to you know keep up revision as uh, she already got my book uh, with the 108 important shlokas and many other shlokas right. she is right. learning bhajans also so how do i see if i make her revision sometimes she is very good especially on ekadashi i make her to revision and she is very okay. happy because she, but other days if i ask her she is like you know how many shlokas more to go it's like uh. that So what do right, I right. how do I maintain that revision? If they don't do revision, they're gonna forget it. Yeah, so th- that's why I said you can you can take like one chapter a day, uh, just five to ten minutes, uh, with no pressure. You can um, if they are comfortable doing it themselves, or you can recite and they can repeat. Um, you know that way they don't, they don't feel the pressure that oh I have to present everything now. the whole chapter i have you know so yeah you can um, do it as a routine that every day we need some uh, 
time for revision of Bhagavad Gita Shloka. Once the routine is set, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, yes, there are some big chapters. Uh, other than that, you can probably split the big chapters, um, maybe into parts. But other than that, uh, if 10 minutes you can give per day, then that way they don't feel the burden. And it's okay. Um, we, may, we may feel that it may, maybe they're forgetting or something, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't actually. You can try at, uh, to inspire them more. Sometimes you can have like a random quiz. So many a times, many kids like that. Or you can have someone else do the quiz. Um, then, you know, when your child knows the answers, they will get very inspired. Or you yourself can do the quiz and then you can inspire. Oh, see, you know that. You know, you know this in the same chapter or many chapters. Uh, but uh, in the long run, don't worry. Even uh, I used to think, we used to think, uh, is he forgetting? Is he forgotten those before uh, whatever he's learned? But no, just make it as a routine and it should, it, it should be good enough. Thank you, Mataji. That really helps. Sir. Thank you, sir. Before going to the next person, do you have time? Okay, I have time. From my side, I'm okay. Okay, so the next one we can take, Mataji. Yes, uh, Mataji, I have a question. Uh, yes. Mataji, I'm taking the Bhagavatam for Kids classes on Zoom, and I'm having tough time in taking activities over Zoom. So do you have any ideas uh, on having remote uh, activities? Thank you for the session. Sure, sure. Uh, yes, Mataji, I, I don't um, do it with them. So especially now during uh, the time, during the lockdown and everything, they are home. So they would do at home themselves. That way they'll have a lot of time to think over. And uh, I don't give any really time frame for them to get back with it. Uh, how, whenever they want to, they can come back and they can share it with others. So they do it that way. They uh, use their creative talent. Maybe they'll discuss with their parents or they can even uh, discuss with me if they, if they like. So I don't, uh, this is for online. For uh, the Bhagavatam class that I would do at school, I would sit with them because they were there with me. And then um, that, that also becomes, that also works easily because um, they're doing some kind of a chart or you, you can make them, they're all uh, gluing something and then they're all having fun together. It becomes a fun part. Um, uh, that's how I, I go about it. If it's online, then uh, it, it's best uh, to have them do at home because for, that way you can cover so many topics. And then um, this, this also eats up. The, I don't know how, how, how much time you have and what is your approach like? But for me, um, a lot of time also goes into, you know, kids share. They come and they want to share what they did. Um, so that way it takes up a lot of time. So they're, they're happy doing it at home by themselves. Does that uh, answer your question? Yes, Mataji, thank you. Okay. Mataji, I think yes. Uh, which uh, class, uh, oh, Mataji, they're asking about your class. Okay, okay. Uh, what, which other question should we take, Mataji? Um, I've seen some comments. Uh, okay. Mataji, we can go from the beginning, maybe. I can see. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to know India time. Uh, Indian time of Maharaj Bhagavatam class. I want to know. I uh, some genie F13 F F103 has it. I want to know Maharaj Bhagavatam class time. I want to know. I, I didn't understand which Maharaj or is it, is it the class that I do, I don't understand. Which, yeah, uh, Mataji, are you there on the call? Whoever is that person? If you are in the call, you can raise your hand and unmute. I, I guess you all can unmute yourself. <laughs> Mataji, there was one question. How can we en encourage to be in Krishna consciousness the children of age 10 and above? 
age 10 and above. Yes, um, I, I, I was mentioning about preteens, right? So see, the basis for everything in Krishna consciousness is definitely uh, Shavan Kirtan. So they need this. Um, and the, of course, to make them uh, develop a taste in Srila Prabhupada's books and Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting that is that is of, that is there for all age groups along with that uh, for preteens like 10 years and above they they are very active and they want a lot of play they need to play and that is good for them and uh, <clears throat> like i said there are so many ideas from bhagavatam and krishna leela uh, we can engage them in that kind of uh, krishna conscious games um, by telling them, uh, so for example, there is in, in the Leela of um, Pralambasura, how many, in how much detail are Acharyas and even in Bhagavatam itself, what all kinds of games they were, it is simple games, uh, but they're so um, fun and, you know, uh, Krishna Balaram were playing all this. And um, so they can play too, why not? They can play. And then that way you can, um, Tell them and explain to them that Leela, what they were doing. And um, if possible, if you could take them to some kind of a natural setting, uh, you can do that. Uh, whatever Krishna, Balaram and Gopa friends, they were doing. So one way to engage them is through Krishna conscious games. And then um, arts, like I said, there are 64 traditional arts. So there's plenty, plenty of room for, uh, you know, uh, engaging creative talents for kids, you know, it could be rangoli, it could be um, jewelry making, it could be garland making, it could be um, DT dress making, and um, it could be learning instruments, musical instruments. Everything can be used uh, for in, in service to Krishna, and we we do definitely um, even music should be uh, there should be some kind of a musical. Uh, uh, talent nurture also because that's also very important for their um, growth and well-being and this our movement is all about uh, uh, Harinam Sankirtan the Kirtan movement so yes definitely so there are so many many kind of uh, we, we have to take um, that extra step like I said there is that uh, devotees a book also available Krishna Krida it's a wonderful book by um, Bharat Chandra Prabhu uh, he has done the research, extensive research about all this. Uh, you could try and explore that. As a, as a society, again, I think we can also uh, take that extra step to create some kind of an environment uh, for more Krishna conscious games and activities and to nurture their talents accordingly. Is that, does, does that answer your question? And, and preaching, of course, storytelling, making children tell story to other kids and having them preach God for book distribution. This can be wonderful, fun activity for them and take them out for Harinam Sankirtan. It'll be wonderful. Thank you, Mataji. Next, uh, Nishi Kaurangi Mataji can go, Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead, sure. Mataji. You can unmute yourself, Mataji. Mataji, can you unmute yourself? Hare Krishna. Oh yeah, Hare Internet. We can go to the next person, Mataji. Okay. Brinda, please be quiet. Okay, um, so I'm reading the uh, question from uh, Paromita Mataji. Mm, thank you for the next class. May, uh, my six-year-old wants to know why she should learn school subjects. She loves listening to stories, Bhagavad Katha and crafts. How do we connect her learning as a service to Krishna? Wow, that's a very nice uh, <laughs> devotee there. So she is, she's got a very nice taste for Bhagavatam. Um, Yes, definitely. Um, we we need to tell everything <clears throat> through the eyes of 
Shastra or Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, I don't know what kind of a school she goes to, if it is the normal school outside. Um, then, even then, even though they may be teaching some of the atheistic uh, subjects, just like, you know, some of the theories of science and all this Big Bang theory, everything is downright atheistic that um, Srila Prabhupada has um, definitely um, condemned. Uh, but we can always take <clears throat> reference from Srimad Bhagavatam and connect it to Srimad Bhagavatam, either refute it or support it. So, for example, if uh, they are teaching um, astronomy, we can uh, share the details, amazing details that Bhagavatam gives about astronomy, um, you know, about the whole cosmology, Vedic cosmology from fifth canto. And we can say, Bhagavatam is talking about that. Now, let us see what these scientists have to say. You can study this um, from uh, their books and uh, you can teach, you can preach to those uh, um, people who are learning that how Krishna has already done this and Krishna is the hand behind all this. And, uh, you know, if that is their interest, they, they, that's how Srila Prabhupada actually engaged so many uh, scientists um, in the moment, like, you know, Sadhaputa Prabhu and Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj. Um, they have done such fantastic preaching to the scientific community. And even for those with a scientific temperament, uh, you know, and they have even... Um, um, come up with the Bhaktivedanta Institute. Uh, so, and, you know, like Srimad, um, like Srila Prabhupada says, Srimad Bhagavatam is like an encyclopedia. There is nothing inside Bhagavatam that is not there and that we, can, we cannot find uh, outside. Everything is in Bhagavatam. So we, we have to go that extra mile and see uh, what we want from Bhagavatam. Do we want to uh, learn about physics? Mm, even uh, um, such high um, level mathematics, even um, there is the calculation of the dimension of uh, an atom is given in Srimad Bhagavatam in the fifth canto. It's fantastic. So we can say Bhagavatam is talking about all this. Why don't you learn from your school and later on preach to those people that, you know, you read Bhagavatam to get better information. But if that's what you, if you want her to go to the school, uh, yeah, you could always connect it and uh, teach uh, through the eyes of Shastra. I hope this answers your question. Sita Priti Mataji, go ahead and ask your question, Mataji, unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Mataji, done with Pranam, all glories to Shilak Rokhad, and uh, thank you for the wonderful session, Mataji. Uh, Mataji, now there are two, three questions I have uh, regarding this kids and different age groups. First okay. is like uh, with the age group, which is about 10, uh, like they are doing the Bhagavad Gita, but uh, how early, like how early should we introduce the Bhagavatam to them? And uh, what is the exact uh, steps for them? Because the, this age group, which is they're the teens, they have so much of work pressure, which is going in the school as well. So you cannot expect them to have three to four days devoted thoroughly to any of the classes. So I feel it hard, like one day uh, in a week is okay for him as of now, because we are in the process of moving. So it's like Indian syllabus for him, which is new. So I cannot pressurize him. But at the same time, I do not want him to lose the touch as well. So what mm -hmm. is the exact approach for that part, Mataji? Can you guide me in that sense? Okay. Uh, so ideally, it is Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya every day. Uh, but you can pick and choose, instead of having a whole devoted session, you can have it in tidbits, uh, just five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, every day you can do, if you don't want to lose touch. Uh, but are you talking about uh, shlokas or just reading to them, Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam? First, we were like, before his syllabus over there started, we were reading Shmad Bhagavatam uh, daily at night before sleeping. So that was a daily ritual. But now it happens that he has, according to the Indian time, he has classes that time. So it has stopped. And that really worries me. So at least as of now, at least reading, I want him to continue. And then, uh, because he asks questions and he is that age you group, you know, like they are a lot of, uh, um, mm -hmm. they have questions and they try to retaliate to things and they try to put right. up their own theories to it. So okay. once they start reading, they, then they ask questions. So the further part takes taken care of. So, so he reads on that, his own. 
he is reading on his own you mean to say he uh, he, he wants we were reading as a as a group uh, we used to read three of us together my two sons and myself we used okay, to okay. read together so that is not happening so that worries me a little bit <laughs> yeah um i think it's a lot of it probably yes mm, we feel yeah some things may be hindering but uh, instead of like i said instead of having a full fledged session something is always better than nothing um, maybe like 5 minutes or 10 minutes before they they are about to sleep before they go to bed uh, that that way to, they can keep the flow keep in touch maybe once a week during the weekend you can have a full fledged session um, and you can you know catch up with where you had left uh, yes they they will have a lot of questions right that um, again setting the routine is really helpful uh once we don't do that and it kind of goes out of the picture then you know even for us to get back to that practice may become a little hard and so it may seem harder and harder but actually most of it is in our mind so we may think it's not possible but just try it 5 minutes a day just before going to sleep or 10 minutes a day or maybe just after breakfast or whenever you have time uh but keep maybe one day of the week during weekend or something where you have more time that way you are, you don't um, lose touch um, that will be yeah. good so that way even by doing every day 5 10 minutes you know that oh we are doing this we have set a time for this we have to do it but another day we can catch up i ho- i hope this helps yes mata ji something has to be done because uh, maybe after we move over there in that set up a timing routine Right. and mataji for the second thing is regarding the competition in kids mataji like that uh, again is a second thing which always i am a little bit scared of and <laughs> so like the competition in kids in sense you know like uh, um, healthy competition is always good but when it comes to like you know some some getting uh, depressed because of that competition or some mm. getting it can be two sides of a coin right so then how to handle as a parent i need to handle that or as a teacher i need to handle that at the same time i want to give them a competitive environment as well so what like have you gone through any such things where you had to deal with that or would you like to share some points on that uh, so you're talking about only in your home setting or within your friends of uh, your f- yeah child, within the students right? as well within the students as well and as it in the teaching with a teaching perspective as well because okay. my younger one is not competitive at all so then i like he does not care like who is going what so that is a very positive point about him the okay. elder one is in his studies so he is also not into competition but from my side when i see like okay i'm taking some quiz or something and then some kids are getting depressed so i do not know this at all i'm not good at it when a competition leads to that feeling right right what is the exact way to deal with it yes definitely everything has two sides to it and yeah competition even in the spiritual world actually prapada always says there is transcendental competition but yeah if it be- leads to envy yeah then that's not the goal um so one way to compensate that is like for example when you have a quiz uh, i can just k- take an example so th- there is always strong areas for one kid weak areas for the same kid so we need to see every every kid has his or her own, her own strong area so it needs to be balanced so oh, this ch- child is performing better in this in this area that child is performing better in the other area so the point is it we have to keep emphasizing it is not about winning uh, what it, it is all about pleasing krishna have we pleased krishna by uh, doing the seva so that that is one thing we have to keep uh, telling our children I, i i do too anything they do do you think this makes krishna happy do you think this doesn't make krishna happy then why are you doing it so that is that is one way um yeah it should not lead to some kind of i have achieved this i have yeah uh, outdone others definitely so definitely not so we have to explain that um uh, why are we all here in this world the first and most important reason is because of envy and this envy means you know i i want to be the best only krishna has is the best no one else can be the best so 
if we think we want to become the best, that means we are competing with Krishna himself directly. Then we cannot uh, serve Krishna or we cannot make him happy. So if, if whenever the point of being best comes, is only Krishna. So we can give uh, shlokas um, from Bhagavad Gita uh, where Krishna says, you know, mm, I'm the origin of everything. Aham Sarvasya Prabhu. I'm the control of, of everything. So things like that. And we can, yeah, uh, that way in, inculcate that uh, feeling of uh, submissive attitude, uh, uh, servitude towards Krishna and his devotees. I hope this answers. Yes, Mataji. Yes, I'm just getting hints of how to deal with that. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much for your wonderful answers. Sure. Hare Krishna. Uh, I can share my email ID um, if you know if people need uh, because I'm, I may be answering it in a short uh, or brief. There are more questions, and if you need to, you know, reach out privately. Also, you could reach out to me, no problem. Uh, I mean, even now so I can take more questions if uh, people want to continue. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So sweet of you, that will be so great. <laughs> Uh, you should I uh, tell my email ID right now? If you'll, um, it's a S S O W M Y A. I'm my um, me, my legal name is Saumya dot G V at gmail dot com. G for government, V for Victor. It's S O W M as in Mary Y A at uh, dot G V G for government, V for Victor at uh, gmail.com. Maybe I can write it in chat. Yeah, if you if you need uh, any, um, you know, help or uh, advice, you want to reach out on pregnancy, uh, uh, samskara, garbhadan, samskara, and, you know, all the Ayurvedic protocol I followed because uh, I have you know kind of shared my knowledge with so many devotees and they have benefited from that uh, I, I take this as my humble opportunity to serve all you uh, devotees so that way also I'll be ready to help if, if at all you can please reach out to me and my husband too for um, you know even if there is some kind of a jyotish uh, angle he can help with no charge of course we don't want to charge him. okay uh, who wants to ask Mataji next anyone else um, Mole, I don't know what this is. Hare Krishna. Is correct. Mole, Mole. Yeah. Can you unmute Mataji? Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mataji. Can I speak to you Mataji? Sure, sure Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare. Yeah. Uh, Mataji, I'm, uh, my name is Radha. I'm from Bangalore. And I'm taking some uh, the, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Devi uh, Bhakti Viksha for uh, smaller kids, Mataji. Okay. But uh, I have kids uh, who are in uh, different age groups right now, around seven to eight kids right now. And uh, some more are going to, new kids are going to join. So as of now, I don't have a batch. They're all in the uh, all age groups. So many a times I'm, I'm confused, like uh, how I should go about you know, uh, teaching these kids. Uh, do you take any formal training for Matajis or can, can you recommend somebody who can give us some formal training like how to go about, I mean, topics, topic wise, which uh -huh. can be thought first and then after that, after that, some formal training for Matajis? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we can look into it. Yeah, I, I can um, help you with that. Uh, you can email me, then I can uh, share my phone number to we can talk over the phone. No problem. Uh, I can help you with that in, in however, whatever capacity I can. Yes, I can help you with that. Uh, the thing is, uh, yes, I have, uh, as I've been working with kids, you know, I have found that, you know, there, there may be different approaches available, but for me, yes. I have been developing my own approach because I have a certain way that I read Bhagavatam. Um, for me, I go into every detail of Bhagavatam and I just don't like to skip anything. And uh, even Acharyas have said, you know, a reading of Bhagavatam, you know how should we read we have to go deeper uh, just like you know in an ocean if we see at the surface we may get a lot of plankton and a lot of um, some of the dirt or 
seaweeds kind of a thing but we are, if we go all the way deep then we get so many jewels and diamonds and of course bhagavatam is uh, you know chintamani um, and kalitam phalam every whether you go deep or at the surface it's fantastic but then uh, we miss out on many beautiful jewels so even with kids i go into details in, even in every purport so and then uh, i try to do you know, certain activity for a certain concept explained there and and it really works that way shila prapath has given everything so fantastically actually we don't even have to worry about oh will our children be able to understand this or that because there is a very nice sequence and eventually they'll get the whole picture of our uh, you know krishna conscious philosophy so yeah we can we can talk about it in detail maybe you can call me or email me no oh. yes ma'am and one more my doubt is is it that we have to one small question mata ji sure uh mata ji is it that uh, we have to go in order like you know you should do the teach them bhagavad gita first uh, then little bit of philosophy is it okay to give them little as you told i understood that you have to give them little philosophy also right. is it we have to do bhagavad gita and then go proceed to bhagavatam is it uh, like that we have to do even for the kids or uh, how is it if they are interested in bhagavatam stories can we go ahead with that how do we do that okay the way i do it is um so from starting from first canto first uh, uh, shloka right so there's so much philosophy even inside the first shloka so that itself gives takes us from the beginning uh, how to go about it and wherever required what i do is uh, i teach them relevant shlokas from bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita shlokas are simpler and that way they they're learning the concept which is relevant both from bhagavad gita and it's already there in shrimad bhagavatam also if required you can no no problem but in my experience over many many times it's uh, it's already there in bhagavatam but maybe you can uh, add more to it by bringing in the relevant uh, uh, you know understanding from bhagavad gita also and uh, as we go along like you know sattva raja tama guna uh, if you have a, a certain um, instance of that you can bring in more uh, citations or shlokas or more concepts from bhagavad gita that way it works and then um so the thing is so first first second cantos are uh, very deep philosophically they have so much more uh, tatva uh, especially second canto there is not much story so to speak so what we can do is i do uh, in, i format my class in a way that okay there is uh, there is shloka they learn shloka and then they learn uh, the philosophy um, from um, bhagavatam and then they uh, do Uh, some story some leela either from ramayana or either from krishna book or bhagavatam itself uh, so there are so many stories from bhagavatam that we can do like a, you know translation reading of dhruva marat story and other stories so that way they get a mix of everything so yes hope it works hari krishna you. mata ji hari thank krishna you. thank you mata ji can i ask question mata ji sure mata ji go ahead Hare Krishna Mata ji actually I am Shweta from uh, Nagpur Maharashtra my okay. daughter she is uh, 10 years old and uh, actually uh, in lockdown period I also took classes two to uh, four session of this uh, our uh, Krishna classes but actually the participants were from uh, non devotee families mm-hmm. and actually my knowledge is also very limited and I want my daughter to learn more about Shrimad Bhagavatam from a uh, very interested and deep uh, knower of like you personalities so what uh, what arrangements can be made from you please okay yes uh, we can do something I, i'm already t- uh, taking some batch maybe if there are more people interested yeah we, i could start a new batch yes mata ji please please okay kyunki main ye bolna hello ha mata ji main ye kehna chahti hu ki har 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 ek devotee mein bhi yani हर एक पर्सन में भी वो टैलेंट नहीं रहता कि वो जो जानता है वो अच्छे से रेसिप्रोकेट कर पाएगा या बोल पाएगा बट व्हेन sure. uh, अब आपके आपके प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में भी आपके दो बच्चे आपने इतने अच्छे से रेस किए हैं और आपको इतना अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस है तो क्यों ना अच्छा हमारे बच्चे भी आपसे <laughs> कुछ ज्ञान प्राप्त कर सके बहुत अच्छा होगा विल बी वेरी हैप्पी ओके श्योरली इफ आई कैन यू कैन रीच आउट टू मी मे बी ईमेल मी और Uh, you can get my number uh, from uh, yes please yes uh, please uh, anjana gopika mataji yeah we can we can do something 
uh, I've already okay, sent Mataji. my email you. on the chat. You can you can take my email from the chat. So. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Uh, who who is going to be? Mataji. Mataji, Mataji start with that. Shama Mataji. Mataji. Uh, Mataji, can I ask a question? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Can you raise uh, your hand? Mataji, my name is Nidhi uh, Gurangi yes. Devadasi. I'm from Baroda. Uh, Mataji, I have two kids. My, my, young, my older son is 10 years old and the younger one is five and a half. Uh, my older son was, uh, I, ho I homeschooled him uh, from the age of three to seven. And then I sent him to Nandgram Gurukul, but uh, because of some health issues, uh, we had to take him back. So okay. he came back uh, just three, four months back. Mm -hmm. So from the starting, you know, he, he was quite good at learning Bhagavad Gita Shloka. So he knows like almost all the chapters of Bhagavad Gita and uh, Pancham Sutti of Bhagavatam. But my my um, the younger son uh, he he started speaking at the age of uh, four 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 plus four years and two months he was when he started to speak uh, okay. so he he's very good at like uh, serving but he doesn't really uh, he's really not interested in uh, learning shlokas so I heard that whatever uh, like. Uh, suggestions you gave so maybe I'll try that but what I really feel uh, I mean uh, is that I, I wanted to ask you like mm -hmm. um, if uh, you already read Srimad Bhagavatam uh, before you started teaching your kids or uh, you read it simultaneously while teaching your kids because uh, I am right now I have been to Krishna consciousness since uh, 10 11 years and right now I am reading uh, the 11th canto and I really don't remember everything. So I, I'll just say the stories to my kids from the storybooks, little storybooks and Krishna book. Um, right. my, my elder son definitely has read the whole Ramayana, whole Krishna book because he himself can read. Uh, right. So like what should be our approach? Like uh, the philosophically, I want to say that uh, you, you were yourself very much thorough with uh, Srimad Bhagavatam before you started uh, teaching your kids or you read it simultaneously with your kids? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, Mataji. As far as I'm concerned, um, yes, I started reading Prabhupada books many years back, even before I got married. And then uh, so was the case with my husband. He also you had read Bhagavatam and he had even read Chaitanya Charitamrita before we had kids. Um, so definitely I, I, I have been reading for a long time and uh, that was that helped me because um, yeah when you have kids it becomes difficult. You may not be able to catch up with the reading and uh, that's definitely a challenge but uh, what really helps is um, if you can at least read beforehand you know especially the philosophical part or the purport uh, then you may be able to uh, explain better um, even if there is no time that's fine you, you, you can keep it short and just read it along with them uh, if there are some areas wherein you feel uh, there is more explanation required you can always uh, ask other uh, your husband or other senior devotees and then you can come back to that same point so but, uh, but I, I don't know how detailed you would like to keep yeah, it basic. Uh, actually my 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 uh, older son is very much interested in philosophy he uh -huh. always has uh, like good questions to put on whenever we discuss something but right. my my young, younger son is like too young like the gap is like almost four and a half to five years so, I mean, um, if I'm going to say any story, then both of them have a different demand, right? Like mm. at night, I tell them stories. So uh, the younger one uh, cannot, I mean, really, uh, uh, I didn't, uh, right. maybe my fault, uh, you know, practice giving him philosophy from the young age. And uh, Actually, I had some family situations because of it. I mean, I couldn't raise my younger son as I raised my older son. And, uh, definitely, my my husband 
has so much of demanding jobs, so he can't right. give some time. And uh, to be very honest, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's, I always see it as my fault because uh, I've seen devotees that if they're challenging times in their life, they could take more shelter of the Lord. But uh, if I go through challenging times, then uh, it really hampers my own Krishna consciousness, like my chanting and reading. So uh, that really affects me a lot mentally. So, uh, and then, uh, I mean, uh, when I am not able to keep up to my standards of uh, Krishna consciousness, then it becomes very difficult to help my kids. And then I really feel very bad about it. And, and then it becomes a vicious uh, cycle for me mentally to get out of it. And I always feel uh, like I'm a loser. I couldn't uh, do much to educate my children. And uh, my, I mean, I, I, I am really even not sure about it because uh, I conceived my, my older son without Garbhadhan Samskar and he's uh, prone to be so good at Krishna consciousness. And my younger son, uh, I tried my best to do whatever I could do to uh, get him through Garbhadhan, but uh, he seems to have uh, less taste for Krishna consciousness. Right. Yes, there are so many factors uh, that goes into, uh, you know, what kind of soul we are bringing in and it, it could be a previous karma too. And uh, But even if they have not been conceived with Garbhadan or without it uh, too, they're definitely special souls because Krishna already knows that they are going to be getting Krishna consciousness later in their life. Uh, but uh, please don't feel that you are a loser, what to speak of loser. No, no devotee should ever feel like that because, uh, you know, how many, how many people in this whole creation even get a chance to uh, chant the holy names of the Lord, get a chance to come in touch with Darshila Prabhupada's this greatest Harinam Sankirtan moment. Even uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manushyanam Sahasreshu. So very, very, very rarely people even come to come in touch with this Krishna consciousness moment. And this is the perfection of a human life. Uh, you have no reason whatsoever to feel like that. But uh, yes, it can be uh, very challenging. Uh, definitely, we all go through our ups and downs. And uh, we need to keep praying. And Lord will surely show the way. And even in my own experience, uh, I've also had so many challenges, my health challenges, so many. And uh, I have seen, but over time, somehow, by, you know, by taking shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, at, at, there were points in a time when I was definitely not at all in a very happy mood. And I, this was even before I had conceived and I had health issues and I was in the US then. It, it gets very lonely there. What do you do? So many things going against you. And uh, the only way I could you know, redeem myself is I, I had to take shelter of Bhagavatam. So when we have no other way to go, when we, we somehow we take shelter in Bhagavatam or whatever works for you or listening to Kirtan, or listening to a lecture, or maybe just uh, reaching out to a devotee. But um, we should know that we are within our limited capacity. We are doing what we can. You're doing your daily sadhana. You're, uh, you know, raising your kids. You're giving them prasadam. You're, you know, carrying on your duties as a housewife. That itself is laudable, Mataji. How many people out there are even able to chant and for as devotees we have doubled the responsibilities and double the pressure definitely it gets to us uh, even even as i speak every day it's it's it just drains me out but uh, what to do we have to keep going especially as mothers we don't have a choice but uh, don't be hard on yourself like i said at least i i i don't have i'm not a person with some extraordinary abilities I know my limitations and um, maybe I don't know some of them, but uh, I, I just have to come to terms with it. So nobody is a loser, especially devotees are very precious to Srila Prabhupada. And uh, you can reach out to me, honestly, I can um, try to answer more. Uh, but one suggestion I have is 
Um, yes, it gets very challenging with a lot of work, uh, household work. If you don't have time, you may have your uh, older one preach to your younger one. That works. It, it maybe inspires more and it gives an opportunity for your older child to even preach. And um, that way you, you can save your time. Um, and then you can spend your time uh, with more deeper philosophical contemplation with your older child. Maybe he can, your older one can, uh, you know, uh, tell the story part to the younger one. You don't have to sit with both of them all the time. Um, and whenever you're actually, actually, yeah. actually, because uh, my older son was, uh, I mean, uh, he was seven when he went to Gurukul, and my younger son was just, I mean, two and a half when his brother went off. So my younger son is really not to staying with him and my older son is also not accustomed to staying with them so they both fight a lot i mean a lot and a mm. lot of our energy goes in, you know convincing them so maybe mm. uh, it takes some time you know to to understand that this is how uh, they stay together in the same house because uh, they are not accustomed to and uh, my right. younger son doesn't actually i mean look up to him as uh, uh, that he should be learning something from him so maybe that's something maybe maybe i think we can we can talk uh, yeah maybe you can email me or call me uh, i think we yeah. can talk yeah. more yeah yes thank thank you thank you for that Madhuri. thank you sure. so much thank you so much okay uh, we can move on to the next question Madhuri. yeah Mataji, um, Champaklata Mataji already got one time chance and like okay. well, one chat question is there um, that is like they're asking like uh, using the laptop and internet seeing the parents using it how we can control kids and if parents are really working online so parents need to use and even if not if we are joining from the classes or it's Krishna Conscious related but how do we control that was the question here Mataji on the Yes, yes, definitely that is there. We, we, we don't live in a time wherein they can be totally isolated from that. Uh, so we have to try to give, um, so if, they're, if they, they're totally adamant, then we have to give in a little bit, at least they can have, they can have them see some Krishna conscious, uh, maybe Kirtan program or a video or a photo. If at all they're unwilling to give in, uh, it shouldn't become too much of a you know, disciplinary thing that, you know, or every time we keep saying no. Uh, at the same time, we can try to give them other options. Okay, see, this is not good. Mm, we can try to tell them, depending on their age. Uh, if you do, instead of this, if instead of phone, if I can tell you a nice story, and then I can g give you, I can make you a nice uh, uh, sweet today. Uh, would you be able to do that? Would you be able to do uh, this with me? Then Krishna will also be happy. So, like I said, everything should come, can come with the, uh, with the means to entice them. Mm. At this stage, they want it. So, slowly, slowly, they will learn that, oh, doing something that makes Krishna happy is better for me. It will make me happy too. So, every time we have to keep reminding Okay, you want this, but you know, will this make Krishna happy? Uh, will it give you Krishna Bhakti? Then can you go to Goloka if you're doing that? So ultimately, we can connect everything to that. So uh, first, we need to show them that beautiful, most idyllic, most perfect picture of Goloka. That has to interest them. And then we can ask, do you want to go or not? So definitely, they'll want to go. And that means we, we need to uh, become good devotees. We need to uh, do what Krishna wants us to do. Slowly we can train them that way. Everything, again, it's about training and molding them. So it, it may not happen overnight, so slowly, slowly we can do. And uh, slowly over time, definitely when they, they get more taste, uh, they will want to, like I said, giving them books with pictures really helps. And I've seen in my own children, even my small one-year-old, uh, he, he's, he may be in his crankiest mood, uh, but if I give him, if I tell him katha, that's all he wants. He'll immediately be pacified. I've tried so many tricks, doesn't work, but uh, tell them katha or give them, a, if you're too busy, then give them some picture book, uh, maybe from either, uh, you know, Shola Prabhupada's, uh, one of the BBT books or even BBT calendars or something. Yeah. 
I think so. We need to just you know remove the mental block and see there must be some Krishna conscious alternative for this. Then it, we can make it happen. How this answers the question? Okay, we can take the next question. Hare Krishna Mataji, can you suggest some kids' picture books? As already you told, right? BBT books. Yes, BBT calendars. And there are so many, um, uh, depending on the age, uh, BBT calendars in US, they're really great. It, and I, I, I used to love them so much that uh, one of our devotees, our Sunday school um, the principal, she had given me a whole lot of uh, calendars that they had just stacked up, which are not being used, the old calendars, and that just works so nicely. They can keep flipping through it. And then um, uh, there are so many other uh, short stories, and especially the four-volume Krishna book. Uh, that's also fantastic. Um, I mean, this is, of course, first preference is Srimad Bhagavatam itself. It has so many pictures. Uh, but if it is a smaller child, if you think he may tear the book or something, you can give other of these options. Um, so four-volume Krishna book was also, it had three, uh, it is a, um, like a shortened version for kids of Krishna book. Uh, and then every page has a, a picture. And there are so many other uh, picture books that uh, it's gone has come up with right now. You can give that. And um, even all these uh, uh, Parikrama, Brajmandal Parikrama book and all those pictures are also fantastic. And um, I would, you know, you can actually share with them so many of these uh, uh, leelas that have happened in that particular areas of Dhamma. And then you can show them the pictures. That will also be good. Yeah, BBT, like I said, BBT calendars, you, we should really collect them. They're really great assets. You just give it to the kids. They'll love it. Yeah. All right, Mataji. Any um, next question? Mataji, there is one question in the chat. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji, I have a question. You mentioned that as... As long as a kid is interested in any, in any anga of bhakti, we are in the right path. My husband and Illas are favorable to Krishna consciousness. And my son is only nine months old, but there is a lot of chances for him to get exposed to other philosophies. So what should I do to keep him in Krishna consciousness? Okay, so you, you said they, um, to the husband and the family are favorable. Yes, yes, Mataji, that's what it's right. Yeah, I think then you should really um, try and give them the philosophy also. Uh, I mean, start with Srila Prabhupada books, like I said. Um, and how, how old is the child again? Yeah, here it is. Nine months. months. Nine months. Yeah, nine months. Yeah, definitely you have, you can mold the child. He's all yours. He or she can mold the child in, in a way that... Uh, um, he becomes attracted to Prabhupada books and then chanting uh, once because and slowly you can introduce the philosophy like I've explained so far and uh, once they get the grip uh, or at least they're able to uh, get that taste then surely they'll want to stick to it by this is see, this is the best best process ever this is uh, undoubtedly the best process that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given uh, it is, uh, uh, there is no doubt about it. So we, we ourselves have that conviction that we, our children will get it from us. Um, and you can definitely explore yourself how our philosophy is the best. I mean, it's not a kind of, uh, Srila Prabhupada also would say this. It's not that it's very, uh, some kind of an egotistical uh, statement, but it is really true. Um, and, uh, because it has come in that sequence. First was Shankaracharya, then Madhvacharya, even if you're talking about other Vaishnava philosophies also. Finally, uh, Mahaprabhu has reconciled all the other Vaishnava philosophies also. And then he has finally given us that, uh, you know, Prema Pumartho Mahan, that Panchama Purushartha of Krishna Prema. He has made that available for everybody. And no one else has ever done that. In, in, Neither none of the other avatars have done that. N none of the other yugas which has ever happened. So this is really unprecedented. And so 
I would suggest, yeah, you you also start reading about all this. And once you get convinced, so what what we want to see in our children, our mood actually, it is what what we give our input is shown in them as the output. So we have that conviction, they will get it. So yeah, we so it's like if we if I don't believe in in a product, I cannot sell it to someone else. So even even my children. Well, in marketing and sales people, they can do some stunts, but this this is transcendental subject matter. We cannot fake it. So definitely it will work. Uh, you keep doing it and uh, there'll be no stopping. So it's good that you're starting early. You you have a better advantage that way. All right, um, maybe next question. <laughs> Okay, Mataji, go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. I have one more question. The little one is from the fridge. Sorry, Mataji. So, um, my question is. Sorry, Mataji. My... Mataji, don't worry. You can email me. You can email me. Um, maybe I had to answer your question also in detail earlier about moving to India. I think. I, I, you can email you can me. Email. I'll, 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 I'll give uh, Mataji's answer to you. Or even my, my phone number. Yeah, you can WhatsApp me. Yeah, you, you can all yeah, WhatsApp me. That's fine too. Mataji, can you ask me a question? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Mataji, I joined the Krishna Cosmetics Consciousness recently, like six months back. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So I have seen it in my 15 and 20 years. And uh, I can see it from the stuff. And after that, because of this corona, it stopped. Now we have Bhakti Vista on Zoom meetings, but children uh, are not all interested. So I try to Prabhupada lectures or uh, Bhagavad Gita Shlokas. I try to put on speakers so that something can go into the room, but they don't want to listen. So like my concern is, I want them to be Krishna conscious of how to put them into that. Okay. Uh, so so how, how old are they, Mataji? 15 and 12. 15 and 12. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, so, so they're... Yes, give them time, Mataji. Uh, usually kids that age, when they have had no Krishna conscious background or they are... Or even if they've had, even if they've been raised in Krishna consciousness, uh, that is a tough age. Um, as a teenager, they stay, they start, um, uh, you know, uh, trying to understand the world outside them, and they, they may get doubts. And uh, what to speak of the, these kids who have not even had uh, association of devotees before? It's only now you say you've started. So it's best that age, like I mentioned earlier, uh, parents should not really try to preach to them directly. Indirectly, you can, you know, uh, you know, keep the books around, or maybe uh, play some kirtan, or see if they are trying, to, if they are getting attracted to it. But the best way for kids that age will be uh, to uh, find someone from the uh, from the devotee community who can um, give them their association, um, either talk to them personally, or you know, if they have. Uh, slightly older kids that can you know hang uh, give their association they need to have friends that age friends become very important for kids whatever the friends do they'll do uh, i've literally seen this <clears throat> there are um, there are kids that wouldn't come to temple at all because everything they think it, it's it's about the image uh, so they think oh, i don't want to go to temple and if the if their friends are willing to go they'll go so, but if they get friends who are devotees, or if they, again, like I said, you can enroll them uh, into some kids activity online group or something. Um, again, 15 year old, I know maybe, I mean, not, they, not, they may not even be willing for that, but uh, don't try to enforce at this stage. Uh, it may um, go against it. They may, just, they may just not like it at all. So it's better to take it slow uh, and then don't try to enforce. Uh, rather, you can you can, if possible, you can have a, you know a program at your house maybe later, 
uh, when when it is safe to have or, you know you can have kids come over that uh, or you can take them to the temple where they can see kids other kids doing kirtan or many a times uh, uh, the kirtan also attract and uh, some kids may become interested in learning mridanga or harmonium or whatever so yeah they they need that association uh, just by parents uh, they don't they may not want to hear that um but if you can find someone who can actually talk to them and um in a way that uh, that may help their uh, you know scientifically or um you know rational mindset mm, if, if they if they are able to answer their questions and uh, philosophically or intellectually that may also work for some kids for other kids uh, they just need friends to hang out with so yeah you could try different things you can i you can reach out to me if you have more questions too on this yeah mataji thank you all right so uh, okay. mataji i have one question like sure sure uh, i am like my friends like because we are new in uh, here in our in dallas and second thing like my children are not that much uh, yeah, i can say so what so they don't want to make friends so in that situation what should i do like how to so sorry can you repeat that your children are not not extrovert they are kind of introvert okay. they are introvert okay okay they are happy in their own world actually hmm. so in that situation what should i do uh like, in some way it's like a, again a chore for me i have to push them for around like two three days before i have to tell them we have to go we have to go and depends on their mood on the day whether they will go or they will not go okay okay so you have been uh, a practicing krishna consciousness and your kids have been into it uh, i mean exposed to it for a long time or not really not long time only six months but uh, oh, okay so you are the same person okay 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 yeah, sorry okay okay yeah you just uh, ask me uh, it's the same person right six months it's been only six months okay since they you've got exposed to this and oh, okay you are saying they are introverted they're not extroverted they may yeah. not be they may not be willing to yeah, mingle um yeah it, it, we have to see case by case that usually kids that age yeah, introverted kids also um they may they may not be willing to gel right away but they take their time but uh, still kids at that age they need uh, 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 you know some kind of association we all need some kind of association uh, yeah how, how to inspire them mm, you can maybe show them some krishna conscious uh, videos um maybe uh, even krishna um, shila prabhupad's um, uh, videos or uh, you know memories or how shila prabhupad you know uh, made possible this whole is gone moment uh something that catches their attention uh love, you know it's because it's a really specific case i don't know the interests of your children so depending on what really interests them depending on what uh, uh, they like doing accordingly you can try to uh, engage them in krishna consciousness um you can read the, like i said uh, chila prabhupad's own life uh, lila amrita so because kids that age they they like reading novels they like reading even biographies maybe and uh, proper's biography is very really fantastic it has so many kinds of uh, twists and turns and so many uh, miracles happening and and this is real life it's not even like you know uh, krishna leela or ram leela which happened a long time back this is something which happened in the recent history that uh, has been recorded and so they may be also and they may be interested in it you can try that you can you can write to me uh, also hari krishna maharaj thank you so much hari krishna yes uh, next question maharaj yes yeah. next question yes mataji ji i think mataji ji uh, uh, we can uh, after this question maybe we can in the call we have a stream at yeah. bhagavatam yeah. 
prayers for the kids in you know, our time after some okay. time have okay. yeah and then arrange uh, maybe next month or somewhere i will uh, talk with you and we can arrange again arrange the class and if somebody okay. you have a question or comment to sure. mathiji uh, her sure. email id yeah khushbu yes. mathiji you can yeah yeah mathiji it is there in the chat also mathiji want to speak? okay speak mathiji Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Uh, sorry, Mataji, I didn't heard your full lecture because of household work. But uh, yeah. uh, I just I have one question, Mataji. I like stay in joint family, okay. and uh, I'm initiated by Radha Nath Maharaj. But uh, here because of my family pressures, and I am married here, and okay. now I have one son, four and a half year. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, Mata Ji, he asked me so many questions. Why we don't eat onion and garlic? Because and uh, actually, his cousins also eat non-veg and everything, but they stay okay. like in separate house. Okay. And he asked me so many questions, and especially for onion and garlic. Okay. And uh, 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 yesterday also, he con- confessed me that uh, he ate uh, onion from his cousin's plate. Bail, he ate bail from his cousin's okay. plate. I said, say sorry to Krishna like that. But mm-hmm. how to handle? Because uh, He is becoming like more because his age cousins his cousin cousin size in K H K he है और उसके ही age के है तो फिर वो ज़्यादा उनके तरफ attract हो रहा है and I cannot stop him like मत जाओ आप ऐसा and even मेरे father in law and mother in law जब भी खाते हैं वो बहुत ऐसे बोलते हैं आप क्यों खा रहे हो आप गंदा होता है मैंने बोला no we don't eat because Krishna doesn't need that we we don't like हम भोग नहीं लगाते हैं उसको but उसको कैसे tackle करना है because he is just four and half year old like that Right, right, right. So you said you live with your in-laws, right? Yes, yes, Mother. It means uh, we fifteen people stay together, Mother. Only I oh. and my husband follow everything. Okay. My okay. husband is like uh, he became now only. He's chanting now only from last year. Okay, okay. But uh, see that that's that's great uh, that your husband is also is also now practicing and chanting. So uh, uh, that really helps both husband and wife uh, think alike. and you can definitely mold your uh, child that way uh, but um, it it is a tough one uh, we have to sometimes go with the flow um, we need to keep praying because when there are so many people intimately um, you know influ- i mean in in the uh, within the very family you said you all live together right 15 people uh, so there is a lot of other influence also uh, please keep praying um and at the same time um don't try to enforce too much because uh, it it may uh, go other way uh the best uh, along with praying for this uh again keep reading bhagavatam uh, for your child and yes uh, as they are approaching 5 years and above there will be so many whys and why not and all this and uh, on different levels we can actually um, address this why onion garlic is not good so for example in the in the leela of samudra manthana right what happens is um, rahu uh, disguises himself as a devata and he drinks the amruta and then uh, surya and chandra sitting next to him they complain and mm, mohini mm, devi yes. you know, avatara she cuts his uh, head off so what happens in, is that he, he had already drank some amruta and then the blood that falls down on earth his blood drops of blood it is that it became onion garlic so no doubt that has Uh, you know it is potent you know it has medicine and value and all that but then it is still the blood of a demon that means we eat that we also get the qualities of a demon so do you want to be like a demon or do you want to be like devotee so these are the kind of things and even um, uh, what happens is the effect uh, you know it 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 really goes on the child's um, Yeah, go ahead. Mataji, actually, the problem is whatever I tell him, na he go in front of everyone and he tells everything. Like if mm. I tell these stories to him, na he directly mm. go in front of my mother. You are eating this. You are eating like if I tell I him, know. like right, so right, it's right. like so shameful situation for shameful. me only that uh. in front of uh, everyone and he they watch me what you are teaching your child. Right. And for him only now I am pregnant. Mataji is nine, seventh month pregnant. So because of right. him only we plan second baby so that. 
he becomes mm. like little bit connected with him rather than other yes. cousins brothers yes yes yeah but, but that now like he is becoming yeah. very when he is very active and hyper and he has so many questions so many questions because even i don't understand uh, because mm. sometimes he uh, like i i play narsimha mantra what is the meaning of bhadra what is the meaning mm. of this so even i even i become so confused what to answer him like that right right no that's very good he is asking so many questions ah uh, you can you can enroll him to some you know class like that uh, again when they see other kids or uh, you know when when he has other devotee kids then his conviction will become strengthened because that, i think right now he's only seeing other uh, family members and family members uh, yeah so naturally he will say uh, he'll think oh, why only we i have to be like this everyone else is doing but when he sees other devotee kids his age or you know around his age they're also following all this then he will definitely uh, have the more, more conviction that is one thing of course now because of lockdown you may not be able to go to the temple but uh, you can definitely i would encourage uh, some kind of bhagavatam or bhagavad gita online session for kids um so yeah and nothing uh, can be praying and the supreme lord will surely uh, kindly you know uh, best of his mercy yes. um, keep praying and i'm sure uh, things will fall in place it's only matter of time yes mata ji thank you so much mata ji thank you thank you mata ji once again once again session and very very nice question answer session thank you for your all the time mata ji for us today i would like to offer my obeisances to you and all the vaishnavas assembled on the call vancha kalpa tarobya pass 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 anand koti vaishnavrind ki jai jai shama mata ji ki